Hey everybody, this is Jamie Shaw, and this is the Jamie Shaw Marketing Show. And my special guest, as of the first of the month of every month, is my good friend Wonder Wit. Hey guys, what's going on? Glad to be here. It's the first of the month, the July. We're already more than halfway through the year, which just blows my mind. It's crazy, but thanks yeah. for having me on, Jamie. Oh sure, it's always a pleasure to have you on. You know, tonight she's going to be teaching how to own the room. You know, and this is a topic she taught it in our workshop, and I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to be busy taking notes on this. But uh, how many of you are in summer school? With you know, me and Whitney are both in summer school. How many of you are in summer school with us? You know, I've been getting tons of value out of it. You know, and I've been doing two days in a row since summer school started. I've done a video on what the topic for summer school was. I've done a Facebook Live on the way home. I know I'm not supposed to Facebook Live and drive, but tough you know that's the only time i got to do one so I'm, that's when i'm going to do one and today i had nobody on but i don't care i still did my facebook live and i still got my message out there so it's out there the replay will be played i'm sure now i gotta go back and watch it now i'm like you did a live i missed it <laughs> yeah I, I started doing them yesterday so i've done two in a row i'm just gonna keep going it's no challenge nothing you know because i'm not the one kind of person who says I'm going to do a challenge I just start doing them and I do them until I run out of content then I quit doing them yeah see I'm the same way where I was doing them like left and right but now with the kids here you know I've got seven kids in the house for summer and it's like there's always some sort of chaos going so <laughs> either my thought is distracted or it's just too loud to do it but I'm trying to be a little bit more disciplined so I'm hoping uh yeah, I'm not one. I'm not a challenge person either. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to lock yourself in a closet for five minutes and be alive. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'll be like, I'm hiding in my bathroom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have some people that get on me for doing them while I'm driving, but I got, I got a holder that sits on my vent, and I put my my phone up there. You know. I pull over and I write out what I'm gonna talk about. Then I set it in the holder and I take off back and drive it again. I just all I do is reach up with my finger and hit the go live button. Everything's already set and I talk while I drive it. I don't look at the camera and see who's coming on. If I notice somebody's coming on, I'll call them out. But you know, mainly I'm paying attention to the road. Just because I'm talking on a Facebook Live ain't no big deal to me because. You know, I'm not interacting with my phone and holding and just paying attention to my phone. It's in a holder. I don't have my hands on it or anything. So, yep. Uh, I feel like, see, I feel like that's not when you're not really paying attention to the camera and you're just kind of talking. It's like, um, for me, it's no different than like having your earbuds in, you know, and putting your phone down and just talking. Right. I, I feel like it's less of a distraction, but that's just my personal opinion. I get mad though when people Snapchat and drive because that one you definitely have to be holding the phone. There's no, yeah. there's no way to auto set that, you know. So it's like, stop snapping and driving, please. But well, usually, you know, when I, I got an hour and a half drive home, you know. So when I get home, I got like thirty minutes to forty-five minutes to get something in my face, and then get on a webinar. You know, because yeah. it seems like I'm on a webinar every night during the week, so. That's when that's my time to think. That's my time to reflect. That's my time to train. It's my time to listen to motivational stuff. So that's a good time where I can squeeze in a three minute extra five, you know. So Yeah, for sure. I like uh I miss doing the lives. And I was doing Instagram lives for a while there too, and I love it because you know, on Instagram you get so much engagement and people will just ask questions, especially if you open it up like that, like, hey. You, know, you just have it's just a conversation and that kind of like this kind of this kind of segues into what I'm going to talk about tonight but it's all about how you approach the situation you know and like live videos I know they're very intimidating for a lot of people but it is about how you approach it if you go in thinking it's scary it's new it's different um, it's gonna be scary and new and different but you know a lot of in a lot of times what you can do is talk to a friend you know or talk to a, a colleague and say hey I'm gonna jump on will you jump on with me and then it's almost like you're just having a conversation with them and you just can't see them right 
you know, it makes it a, a whole lot easier when you build a rapport with the people that you're connecting with on social media. It's way less intimidating because then it's just like talking to a group of friends. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, like yesterday, I haven't done a Facebook live in a long time. Yesterday, I think I had like three people on. And like I said, tonight I didn't have any on. But when I got up this morning, I had five friend requests. I'm like, where the hell do these people come from? You know, so I went and checked out everybody's profile to make sure they're real people and see what they were was on their page and stuff. So, you know, so I connected with all of them and I've had some good conversations with three of them. A couple, one of them, one, uh, he started pitching me about Bitcoin. I said, I'm not interested in Bitcoin. And he asked me what I did and we had a, started having a good conversation. And then he said he had to go to bed. And then, uh, Another one responded to me and told me they were having a great day and that was it. But the fifth one never responded to me. So we'll see. Maybe, you know, maybe that was bedtime in their area. Yeah, I've noticed, I've noticed in the conversations, I'm like, uh, some people won't really engage with you back. Like sometimes I'll just get like a wave or a, thanks for adding me. And then they, they kind of disappear. <laughs> of like, right. okay, we could, we could talk. We could have a conversation. <laughs> it's cool though. It's cool. You can warm up to me first. It's all good. But, you know, you do have those conversations where it's like, where are you at? Where are you from? And people really, you find out so much. If you can get people to talk about them, oh, man, you're you're getting somewhere. You're getting somewhere. But let me, uh, do you want me to go ahead and start with this, uh, how to own the room? Yeah, I'm going to mute up. I'm going to let you have the floor and you can tell us how to own the room. All right. Well, We've got an event coming up here with the MLSP in August. So I thought this was pretty good timing, I'm a little refresher course. Um, I know a lot of people have either been to a previous event or maybe this might be their first event, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to this because of all the keynote speakers that are going to be there and also some of the bigger names in network marketing that are going to be there. Now, knowing that going in, it can be a little intimidating. It can be a little intimidating to think, well, oh my God, you know, these six figure earners are going to be here. How am I supposed to make an impression? You know, what, what am I, I'm not a six figure earner. What am I supposed to do? How, how do, how do I approach them? Like, how do I get them to notice me? Let me tell you, oh my gosh, I love this one. Okay. So before I get into my notes, I have a little anecdote. Whenever um, me and my sister were younger, we were teenagers, we would get invited out to graduation parties and, um, you know, wedding events, all that kind of stuff. And um, I particularly don't rate myself on like the Sports Illustrated end of the spectrum. And I, I never have. But because me and my sister were, you know, average looking girls and dress up for the occasion, of course, but we were bo both raised very conservatively, so it was never scantily clad. You know, we were never catching anybody's attention because of that. However, when we walked in the room, you typically noticed us because we've always carried ourselves with confidence. And we've always carried, and I, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you're just saying be confident. No, I have a whole lot more than just be confident. And But for the other part of the room, that's like, it's easy to say be confident, but what does that even mean? What, is, what does that mean? Especially if you're not a confident person naturally, which guys, I'm naturally an introvert. I like my little corner of my room. I don't like being around large groups of people for extended periods of time because it's draining for me. It's draining. I'm an introvert. <laughs> I like my space. So to be confident in a situation, you're going to have to take an inventory of some skills. They're going to be different for everyone. But this is going to make it super easy for you to have some go-to cards in your back pocket where you know how to rely on yourself. Now, um, how to own the room. Here's a, the great first point, and I love this one, is be a mood creator. So what does that mean? How do you create a mood? Creating the mood has more of an attitude aspect to it than anything else. Walking into the room at an event, I remember my very first event, I was nervous. Again, I'm an introvert, I have anxiety. 
So walking into a room where I only knew, you know, a handful of people and I didn't know if they were going to be there, I was nervous and I was looking for them. And I'm like, where am I? Are they here? Who's here? Do I know anyone? You guys, before you ever get out of your car, step into the person that you know you can be, that higher level vibration. And instead of going in and thinking, who's here? Where are they? Start walking into, I'm here. I'm here. Who's looking for me? Start making eye contact, expecting people to be looking for you. And when you make that eye contact, even if it's somebody you don't know, say hi. Say hi. You know, when you walk into an event, an event, know where you're going. Um, if you, a lot of times there's not really like a sign seating, but think about it beforehand. You know, there's usually two to three sections. Do you like sitting in the middle? Do you like sitting on the side, in the back of the room, in the front of the room, where are you at? If you know where you're going, when you walk into that room and you make a beeline for your spot, it makes a big difference. It makes a big, big difference. Now, personally me, I like sitting in the middle, but I also like being towards the back. So I know exactly where I'm going when I enter a room and I make my way that way. Um, and I'm making eye contact along the way. Like I said, I remember my first event. I was in the back. I was a little sheltered. I'm like, ah, you know, nervous. But that's not me anymore. Um, I can honestly say that's not me. That's maybe me on a really, really bad day. But again, being a mood creator is I'm here. I know that I'm here already. I know the skills, the assets, the tools, the training, the knowledge that I do have. And I know I have more to learn. So I'm here to learn it. That's how you start creating that mood. And this is also really helpful when you're building rapport with people in your private conversations. Because if you come in confident, you come in strong, and you create your own presence, it's impossible to ignore. And they already like you because you're already leading them subconsciously. Subconsciously, you're creating a foundation for them to know, like, and trust you and therefore buy from you in the future or maybe partner with you in the future. Or maybe they're going to do something out there, they're gonna they're they're gonna take an, uh, a new venture somewhere, and they're gonna bring you along with them. That's what you want. That's what these events are all about. It's not just learning; it's making connections. That's probably the most valuable tool from an event that you could have is making connections, because you don't know when those connections are gonna pay off. You don't know if they're gonna be a fifty-year investment and down the road you're gonna have the most amazing business partner, or if it's gonna pay off next week. When somebody says, hey, you know what, I got this going on and I thought maybe you'd want to be a part of it, I don't know. Or, hey, I got this tool, this resource, do you want to check it out? I can send it your way. Those types of friendships are completely invaluable. You cannot put a price tag on that. <clears throat> okay. um, when you're being a mood creator, these are some some really cool uh, little conversation tricks I was going to share. But uh, sometimes you know somebody by way of somebody. So like, let's say I know Bob. And Bob's a great friend of mine. And Bob knows Jack. And Jack's a six-figure earner. And Bob always has great things to say about Jack. Well, if I come up to Bob and Jack walks up, and Bob says, hey, have you met Jack? What do I do? A lot of us would be deer in the headlights, you know, maybe nervous rabbit, like, ha, ha, I'm so glad to meet you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, you get nervous like that. And, and maybe you didn't come off with the most char charismatic approach to that person. But what you can do instead is tell this person, hey, do you? Do you pay Bob to like say all these nice things about you? Because this is ridiculous. That's all he says is like super nice things about you. Hold on one second, please. Well, the trials and tribulation of being a single mom, you know, so when the kids come screaming, you have to pay attention to what's going on, you know, so I wonder what it gets, tends to 
her kids and see what's, see what's going on, you know, we'll continue on. And, Sorry about all right. that. That's all right. That's all right. You know, that's the trials and tribulations of being a single mom. So, yeah. Um, you know, kiddos, kiddos, she's almost four and I cannot wait. Three is killing me. <laughs> killing me and not so softly but going back to um you know the the teasing um is it the, the teasing compliment you know it it relaxes people it makes people laugh if you can make somebody laugh they already like you they already like you <laughs> and subconsciously they kind of trust you a little bit it's kind of weird how the psychology breaks down but it's true um so that, that teasing compliment of opening with somebody, hey, do you pay this guy to say all this stuff about you? It alleviates the situation. Because let's face it, somebody who's used to getting the, the doting attention is probably tired of it. And it might be refreshing to have somebody compliment them or somebody have them say something that's like not run of the mill. And it's more memorable. So um, another thing... <laughs> Another one, this one, this one's kind of interesting. Whenever you're um, introducing or introducing yourself to somebody, or maybe uh, you know somebody, like if I was gonna meet Mark Harvard, the king of video marketing, I would definitely wanna stick in his mind. I hear wonderful things about him all the time, but I won't, I wouldn't want to be everybody else to him or just another face to him. So when I go up to Mark, I might say something like, you know, it's nice to meet you. It's great. So let me ask you this. And that pause. Or, hey, I have a question. And that pause, that long pause, just to make sure that they're turning their head back to you and, and making that eye contact. Because eye contact registers on a whole other level. I want somebody who is a six-figure earner or um, known for a specific strategy, somebody who's a professional, somebody who's not just a professional, but an industry like legend. I definitely want their eyes on me when I'm talking to them. Their eyes are around the room. They're probably not listening to what I'm saying. Um, okay, so that's like the, the suspenseful opener. You know, you got that pause in there just to make sure that you're gaining their attention back at you. Um, you also have, this is a really cool tool just in conversation, especially if you've had, if you have like a, an alpha struggle with somebody, this happens. Uh, I feel like this happens a lot in marketing where it seems like somebody always wants to get the leg up or maybe there's a little bit of unsaid friction in the room just because you're both trying to be the authority. But the thing about authority is you don't actually have to position yourself all the time by putting somebody else below you. In fact, it's actually more authoritative if you can play point to somebody else. Because like so many people have said before, um, you don't have to know everyone. You just have to know somebody who knows it. Or you don't have to know everything. You just have to know somebody who knows it. So um, make somebody else the expert. When you have that friction going and you're both kind of rubbing each other just a little bit off it's okay to say so what do you do or you know when they when they start talking about a strategy that maybe you kind of know and you don't want to like let go of that authority because it's a pride thing and your ego is getting in there it's okay to swallow your ego and say so what do you do in that situation or you know letting them take the lead it's okay to be authentic and say, I know nothing about that, actually. I just know, you know, X. What about all of this? You know, tell me how you do it or, you know, tell me what you think about it. Saying something like that is really refreshing. It's really nice when you can just let that go and swallow your ego and, and actually have somebody else be the authority. You don't have to know it all. You can be authentic and vulnerable because there is a special kind of strength that comes with vulnerability. And, and it's, it's a real hard mark to find for a lot of people, but it's the mark of a real leader. You'll notice that guys like Mark Harbert or Steve Kripta or, um, you know, Ray Higdon, 
they don't say they're everything. They say what works for them, and they're not afraid to give somebody else props. In fact, if you follow Ray on Facebook, he's constantly shouting out his team. He's constantly shouting out other marketers, other professionals, because calling attention to somebody else and giving them props is real. It's real. You don't have to be a hundred and thousand percent. It's okay. You can give some props to somebody else, you know? Um, you don't need to know everything. Okay, so these are little tips in conversation that can help you create the mood, um, you know, or be a mood creator just to get people primed and pull down that defensive wall so that they will like you. Like I said, those relationships pay off thousands fold for years to come. So, okay, so my second point is don't stay ready. What does that mean? Does that mean you have to be on your A game all the time? No. But when you don't need to get ready or get in the state of mind, you, um, where am I going? <laughs> I lost my thought. When you don't need to uh, get ready, you won't waste the time trying to get ready if you stay ready. Be ready. If you already have a self inventory of the tools, the training, the assets, you know, if you have your list of strengths, if you will, you don't have to get ready. You already know what you bring to the table. If you're the person that's constantly like, I don't think I'm good at this or I don't think I'm good at that, it's time for a real self evaluation. And if you need help, reach out to somebody that you trust, reach out to several people that you trust and start getting an inventory. It may not be what you want to hear but it's what you need to hear especially from other people who are going to be really really honest with you and definitely prime them to be honest with you because if you cannot for the life of you you know gun to your head have a list of strengths and weaknesses that you can pull from you're not going to have a lot of luck creating mood <laughs> or being a mood creator um so definitely Keep in contact with your higher vibration self. This is something that I've said before, but, you know, a lot of times when you're having um, low motivation, when you're you're just having a tough time getting back into the groove or staying consistent with your strategies, it's time to have a day where you shut down your computer and you have a talk with your higher vibration self. What's the higher vibration self? That's the version of yourself that you picture yourself becoming. That's the version of, you know, the super amazing leader who's walking the stage or maybe, you know, the six, seven figure earner. It's that person that you want to get in tune with. It takes meditation. It takes visualization. You know, go back to the vision map and what kind of car you're driving or what kind of things are you doing for you and your family and your friends? Uh, what kind of, you know, you know, universal deposits, are you putting back out there into the market, into, you know, your community? What are you doing to contribute to society? Talk to that person. Get in tune with that. Meditate. Visualize. Heavy visualization, guys. When I say what kind of car are you driving, I want you to know what the leather smells like. I want you to know what color your floor is in your new house or what color the water is on that vacation at, you know, Bahamas. I don't know. Whatever the dream is, what what does it smell like when you wake up in a you know in the mountains when you go skiing with your family for Christmas? I don't know. What what is your dream? But know those things. If you can get down to the smell of things, that's some visualization right there. That's real visualization, real meditation. Not this fluffy stuff where you sit in a corner for five minutes and hum or something. If humming does it does it for you, then I'm not dissing. It's just get real with it. Um, but talking to that higher vibration self on a consistent daily basis, when you're bored doing the dishes, when, you, when you're mad folding the laundry, that's what I do. I hate folding laundry. So I typically try to daydream or visualize and meditate as much as I can while I'm doing it. Um, I, I usually visualize about how I'm going to have a maid to do it for me. <laughs> but, um, you know, don't get ready, stay ready. Stay ready. If you're constantly talking to that person, you already know your strengths. You already know what you bring to the table. So just keep that in the forefront of your mind. Know your strengths. 
so you can play them. Um, my third point, this again is a very prevalent theme, but know your unique selling points. Yes, you have a self inventory of hard and soft skills. You know, if communication's your jam, communication's your jam. Uh, me, I love communication. I love talking to people. As much of an introvert as I am, I love having really deep conversations with people. And I like getting into somebody's head and figuring out what makes them tick. I know, um, you know, some of my hard skills, you know, I'm a, I'm a great verbal communicator. I'm a great uh, written communicator. Um, you know, I have... It's okay. Sorry. Four-year-olds. Okay. That's enough. Um, sorry. <laughs> ah, hard skills, you know, where you, you have these hard and soft skills, you know, whether it's com communication or, you know, you're a digital badass. Um, that's Jamie's area of expertise. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> that is definitely not my unique selling point. I'm like, I call Jamie when I need help, which is often. But... <laughs> Knowing that my talents are communicating with people and breaking down visions and mapping and strategy, that's where I thrive. That's where I work really well under pressure, like knowing all that about me, but also know your passions. What are you passionate about? Even if it's passionately, no. Like even if you hate something, know what it is. Because having that assertive attitude is definitely a unique selling point. I don't know very many people that are assertive. I know a lot of people that are like, well, I don't know, maybe. I know, I think 90% of people are, well, I don't know, maybe, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a, being assertive is much more rare and makes you more unique. So know those things, you know, a little interesting bits. These are cool things to have. Because if you can let your freak flag fly, you'll notice a lot of weirdos just like you. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. But having it to where you are comfortable with being yourself and, you know what, maybe some, who, who was it? Todd and Leah Getz, when they did a webinar, they mentioned being gamers. And I remember seeing Brian Finale's face just light up and kind of like, laugh a little bit and he's like me too and they had like a little minute of exchange and it was just the funniest thing to see but you could see the mood change you could see the energy change like oh we're gonna have to talk about this later when we're not live on a webinar with thousands of people <laughs> but imagine having that kind of exchange with somebody that you really admire like a, a top income earner in your company or or maybe just in the network marketing space like how cool would it be if you were having a conversation with Tony Robbins and you figured out that you have like the same type, like you, you had the same favorite pizza. It's, it's silly and it's weird, but at the same time, it's like you just humanized on a level that probably not many people, like if you have the same, I don't know, birthday with somebody, you like that person just a little bit more and it's absurd but, you know, it's that little thing in common. It's that little unique point that gives you a little bit of a leg up. That makes that person like you just a little bit more. So work with those things. Take inventory. These are all assets. Whether it's a hard skill, soft skill, passion, um, you know, even if, like I said, even if it's something you passionately hate, passionately hate, like, I hate onions. I hate onions. I hate raw onions. And I know <laughs> several people who hate raw onions just because I've said I hate raw onions. And all of a sudden there's like a I hate raw onions convention going on in the three foot arena by me. <laughs> but imagine, imagine connecting with people on something real and silly. It just breaks down those barriers and resistance. <laughs> Or onions and the gaming part of it, you wouldn't think I would be a gamer. And I don't really consider my gamer myself a gamer, but when I have 
a stressful day, you know, sometimes I can come home and I'll kick on the PlayStation and I'll play Call of Duty just to blow some shit up so I can release some stress. You know, I used to have Call of Duty on a Nintendo DS, but I'm so uncoordinated. It was painful. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I think it's because I played soccer at a young age, and at least that's what I'm blaming. I'm like, the hand-eye coordination just didn't work out. And so it just got turned off at a young age. But, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, what if you could have that conversation? If you could have, like, a 10-minute conversation of just laughing and joking with, like, Todd and Leah gets about games. That would be cool. They would like you. And you know what? That's the way you get invited up to, like, private parties and rooms where there's, like, a little shindig going on after the event. Those are, those are like, golden tickets. So, okay, so unique selling points. Um, oh, here we go. Number four. I like this one. Always add value. I have said it before. I will say it again. I will say it till my dying day. When you have reached a certain point in your development as a human, personal development, as a marketer, you realize that it's not about you and that relationships aren't about fulfilling a void. It's about enhancing what's already there, enhancing somebody else. It's about what other people need. That's why this industry thrives because we communicate what other people need. That's why marketing is a necessity. Now, if you're in a conversation with somebody, think about what they need. And like I said, it's not always a bad thing to play point. In fact, sometimes it can be very, very valuable to be the point man because that's a favor you can call in later or maybe it's just a something they're going to keep in the back of their mind. Like, you know, if it wasn't for this person, I wouldn't have met this person. That was my next business partner. Something like that. Or I wouldn't have taken this venture that, you know, made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Always add value. When you know you're you're talking to people, when you're trying to communicate certain things, if you aren't the person that they need, it's okay. You don't need everyone. You don't need a hundred percent. You don't need a hundred percent of the pie because we can always make more pie. That's that's the name of this game. But Think about what they need. Think about if they're receiving what they need from you. Now, if you can point them in the direction that they need to go, that's incredibly valuable to them. And these things are universal deposits. They come back in some way, shape, or form. If it's not that person who's going to remember it, it's kind of like adding good karma. When I talk about universal deposits, that's basically what I mean. It's like adding to good karma where it's going to come back around in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, do, do I, uh, you may be talking to somebody thinking that they might be a great business partner for you, or they might be a great resource for you. But are you going to be a great resource for them? Or are you going to be somebody who's kind of riding their coattails? Because nobody really wants to drag people with them. And we can always learn from everyone, but... How are we adding value to that person? Now, for me, there's not a lot I could probably give to a six-figure earner to add value, somebody who's already well-established in the industry, except being a friend. Or maybe I know somebody they don't. Maybe, maybe. It's, pro it's not very likely, but at the same point, like, I'm sure, I'm sure at some point getting really vulnerable with them and saying, you know what? Because you said this, it completely changed my outlook. And now I understand how to apply X, Y, and Z, and this is what I do with it. So I just really want to say thank you. You know, I appreciate what you do and, you know, all the, the free tools or maybe that you got it from a live video they did. You know, something like that is like an energy boost for somebody. Because I know when it happens to me, when I've done a video or I've done a training and somebody comes back to me later and says, you know, because you did this or, you know, when you said that, I started applying it and now I totally get it. 
now I totally get it. It makes more sense and I've had way bigger results or I, I took this and I did this way and I got amazing results. That's like a yes, okay, cool. Like I don't care if I profited off of them. I don't care if I made money off of them. I care that I helped them. So when you're talking to these people, have those real moments where, you know, it's a little vulnerable and maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but have those and add that value to them and let them know that you appreciated that value and just give them a thank you. I mean, that's, that's valuable to me. It's valuable. If, if I'm out there and I've like spent an hour on a call with somebody and they haven't said thank you, I'm a little bit miffed, I'm a little bit upset. Like, really? I know when my kids, when, but I, it's silly, but with my kids, you know, and they're like, can I have a drink of water? And I'm like, what do you say? Please. Okay. And I give them the water and I'm like, what do you say? And it's not necessarily that I want my kids to thank me for everything that I do for them, but I want them to be appreciative and take those habits with them later. So that way when somebody else does it for them, they'll say, thank you. It's the same concept. <clears throat> it's just more of a professional courtesy but it adds value to that person's life to know that they're helping. Even if they have nothing, like, like think about it. Ray Higdon has thousands of people on his broadcasts, thousands at a time. But I'm sure it's still really nice to hear a thank you from somebody who maybe popped on one of his lives. I'm sure it's still, he's a, he's a very, uh, very cool guy, but um, I'm sure it's still valuable to him. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, so never compromise your standard. That's point number five. What does that mean? A lot of the time, when you have these conversations... Wait a minute, time out, time out. What was that? Oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh, my bad. Um, never compromise your standard. Okay. That's point number five. Never compromise your standard. Um, what does that mean? So your standard, your vision, your how you want to be your higher vibration self, you don't compromise that in any situation, no matter how unfavorable it is. Now, we're marketers. A lot of us are competitive by nature. Like I said, you'll have those little power struggles in conversation with people but it's never a time to stoop under them or to try to elevate yourself by pushing somebody else down. How you want to live your life and how you treat others, your standard is your compass to the way you want your life to be. If you're compromising that in conversations just to gain a little edge or maybe make somebody feel like they don't know something, you've already lost. You've already lost everything. You've already compromised your standard and it's going to show up somewhere. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with playing point. Nothing wrong with being a wingman to somebody who's super brilliant. Nothing wrong with that. And your ego will keep you broke if you're not careful. So you want to make sure that the person you want to be is who you're becoming with every conversation that you have. What does all this have to do with owning the room? It has everything to do with owning the room. Because all of these things work together. They synergize and they form that compass. And when you walk into these events and you know that you're there to add value to other people, that you're not going to compromise your standard, that you have amazing skills, that you're ready to be there, and that you can create any mood you choose just because you know who you are and you know who, what you bring to the table. That's how you own that room. When you walk in there with purpose and knowing full and well what you're ready to do and who you are, it shows. It shows because you're not the mouse in the corner. It shows because you're ready to have that conversation because you visualized it 18 times on your way there. It shows because the way you walk and the way you, you step into that room, who is that person? I think I know them. People have seen you around in passing. This is the same circle. We get around. We get around. People know us. People, people start to become familiar. But when they see you in person, especially if this is the first time that they're seeing you, 
you want to make sure that an impression lasts. You want to make sure that that impression is impactful and that they're looking for you. Anytime you get up to go to the bathroom, anytime you get up at, during the middle of, of the session, just to, I don't know, stretch your legs or maybe you saw some action going down in the back of the room and you're trying to get back there. Anytime, walk with purpose. Walk with purpose. Have every intention set on the way that you are taking your steps. Walk with intention and purpose, and I promise people will notice you and you will own that room. There is not a single time that I haven't applied this where I didn't walk out the highlight of a party or the highlight of the night. When I go somewhere, I apply these things, no matter who I'm with. I don't care if I'm with friends I've known for 20 years or people I've never met before. I'm going to own that room because I don't know what kind of difference they might make in my life. I don't know if getting into their circle is going to benefit me in some way. I don't know if they're a future business partner. I don't know if they're my you know, next consult. I don't know yet. Only time will tell. But I know that if I apply these things, they're going to come to me instead of somebody else. Because I know my value. I know my points. I know my standard. I know exactly what I want them thinking about me and how to get them there. And I'm going to. And if you're doing this, if you're doing this, I hope you guys took notes. I hope you guys are watching this replay. But seriously, if you're doing this, you will get the goals that you want. You will get there. You will get people to notice you and you will own that room. <clears throat> so I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, as far as adding value to your conversations, I know I've been on here before talking about prospecting and rapport building with Jamie. And you can watch that replay too. Um, as always, um, you can message me too. But there's always these little tricks in conversation that you can get people to tear down their walls, get them to laugh. That's the fastest way you can build rapport with somebody is get them to laugh. If you can get someone to laugh, you can get someone to like you. And you're already halfway there if they've laughed at you. Oh, yeah. You know, and I've said this many times, you know, um, people don't buy you because of whatever product, buy from you because whatever product you're throwing out there or whatever link you're throwing at them, they buy from you because they get to know you, like you, and trust you. You build a relationship with them using the techniques that one of which trained on many of my shows and you start building a rapport with them and they start to know you become part of your warm market. They start to like you and like, you know, when you do a Facebook live, they hop on and stuff like that. Then they trust you because they know who you are. They see you out there all the time producing content. So they're more apt to get on your list and buy from you. Exactly. I mean, how many leaders do you watch or maybe just people that we've met in passing and you watch their lives and you come to know their personality, you remember the, the way they laugh or the types of jokes they laugh at, you pick up their personality and by the time you meet them in person, it's like you've known them forever. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what these events are all about is networking, making these connections and solidifying the ones that you've already made. But let's face it, leaders go to events. All future income earners go to events. Yeah, I agree. You know, and I say that, and I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to be able to make that live the dream. But yeah, I've been to events, you know. Uh, my first event was Chicago. I've been in Nashville a couple of times, you know. All to events. I've met, you know, big leaders in the industry. Um, one of my favorite leader is Paul Hutchins. You know, I met him last year in 2016 in Nashville. Got a picture with him and everything. You know, if you go scroll through my timeline, through my pictures, you'll see a picture of him. I met Desmond Soon. You know, Desmond Soon's a good, a big marketer in the industry too. And when I met Desmond, the first time before I met him in person, he was just like me. You know, when I was back, when I was struggling stuff, he was just like me. He hadn't got over the hump yet. You know, and now he's a big influential marketer and does YouTube and all, all kinds of stuff. So they come from the same stomping grounds that we come from. You know, they started with nothing and they worked their way up. You know, Desmond Soon, if you never heard his story, he was being chased by the mafia because he owed them a bunch of money over in Japan, you know, and not just any mafia. It was the uh, Yakuza or whatever they call it over in Japan. Um, so he was in 
he was in a lot of trouble and he owed them a lot of money and they were hunting down you know he helped me out a lot paul hutchings helped me out a lot you know and you know the other leaders that i met in nashville was you know mike hobbs you know and those are guys that are really influential uh justin Gringe, some of you know him i met him too um i didn't get to get a picture with him but i did meet him uh aaron Raskin, i met him uh can't think of the other guy's name. Big tall Russian guy. Uh, his wife's name is Anna Zubrov. Alex Zubrov. I met him and Anna. You know, and they're real people. You know, I met them in another company, but they've all moved on from that company, and they're in other companies now, and still putting out stuff in the marketplace. Still being influential. That's another thing to talk about too. Is um, you know, I know there's, it's kind of a faux pas to company jump and all that kind of stuff, but the fact of the matter is we don't know whatever is in the future for our companies. We hope for the best, but, you know, prepare for the worst. That's why branding yourself is so important. And when you do end up moving on from a company, it's just a next phase, guys. It's just another part of the journey. But, you know, going back to the events, you don't know who your future partner or maybe your future team leader might be. And it might be somebody you met at one of these events. So go in with an open mind. That's another thing. You just, you can't write anyone off. Like you said, you know, that guy, that guy was not over the hump yet, and now look at him. Oh, yeah. You know, and what you just said is exactly true because, you know, you showed me something the other night, you know, and I'm considering it real highly, you know. So if I joined, I would be, Wonder would be my sponsor, you know. So. You never know. And she's worked with me for off and on for the last year. She's been on coming on my show for what, the last six months? Something like that. You know, we work well together. We have fun. You know, I'm the techie guy and she's the the mindset girl, you know, so we, we figure it all out together. So Yes, it's a, it's a nice balance. It's a nice balance, you know. It's a, it's nice to know that somebody has my back, which, you know, is is definitely this is one of the coolest parts, I think, for me about, you know, opening up your mindset to, because um, I know when everybody joins their first company, you know, you're taught to stay in, in color in the lines, really. But when you, oh, and, that, and that's something that's always kind of bothered me because I wanted, I saw my friends joining other companies and I wanted to be able to help them, but it was frowned upon and it was like, well, I'm not a bad person for wanting to help my friend, you know? <laughs> So, um, you know, having the restriction kind of pulled off in my mind, you know, eliminating that barrier and going in thinking, you know, okay, I can help anyone or I can work with anyone, you know, pulling that back has been one of the most valuable assets too, just because you're so much freer. <laughs> uh, you know, and it don't hurt to have be part of multiple companies, you know, like a, I'm part of the freedom it's called the freedom funnel system. You know, I use it. it's a marketing tool is what I use. And actually one of the uh, affiliate sites in there is called a uh, plugin for profits. So that was the, actually the first affiliate product I ever or system that I ever used. And I didn't make any money with it. So I moved on from it, you know, and then mm -hmm. the second company that I made quite a bit of money with that I was with, I'm still a member of their community and everything. I get in, log in them, you know, write in my blog in that community once in a while. And they still have great training and stuff. And I made quite a bit of money in there. That's where I learned. I mean, I knew how to build blogs and stuff then, but that company really fine tuned my blogging skills or how to build websites and, and blogs and stuff. That's why I'm so good at it, you know, and I, I took college classes on it too but they really fine tune on how to build it and monetize it, you know, and some of the ranking strategies I've learned on how to rank YouTube videos I've applied to my blog and been able to rank my blog on the first page of Google. I had my blog post and my YouTube video for the same blog post one and two, you know, and not everybody can do that. A lot of people have problems doing that. And I that learned a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot of those skills in that company. You know, and in the last company, you know, I learned some good skills in that, but, I don't want to talk about that company too much because they're kind of they were great in the beginning, but they're kind of going down a flame. So, and it yeah, happens. <laughs> it, and it happens. You just cannot predict. Um, I don't, my my first company is definitely hitting it hard right now. It's it's getting it. It's, it's I think it's on its last leg. I hate to say it, but because I of course I don't wish anybody bad, but 
I mean, it's just the the life of a business, you know, and it just depends on your model and, and everything else and the development that you do with that company, of course. But you as an affiliate or rep, you can't predict those things. You just can't. Um, it's it's not necess it's not actually your company. It may be your business that you run that you can run like your business, but it's still not your company. You don't own it. You don't have a say in the comp plan or what happens in the future of that company. So yeah. the reason I brought up companies because I got an email <coughs> the other day that I, and it was a commission notification. I'm like, and it was for a product. And I'm like, what the hell is that from? You know? And so I got to looking at the email and it was a ClickBank product and it was with the second company that I made. Evidently somebody bought, from something that I have out there somewhere that I did, you know, that, and that was the beginning of my marketing career. That was, uh, oh, let's see, six or seven, you know, about six years ago, I was with that company and I made a commission off of it like two weeks ago on a product that I have out there somewhere that I promoted. And I thought that was, I'm like, wow, that was a long time ago and I haven't ever promoted that product since. And I just happened to make a commission off of it. It was like, 50 bucks or something like that. But you know, still, yes. it just shows you when you got <laughs> content out there, you got stuff out there, people see it and you know, they buy from you. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, content's another way you create more residual. So content's just paramount. It's not, of course, you know, again, going back to the events, it's just, it's necessary to build your business and create that residual, but it's also a way for your people in your communities, whatever communities that you may end up being in, to get to know you and to get to trust you and maybe partner with you. I mean, content just feeds the life of your business. Oh, yeah. I mean, I seen that and I was digging through, I got shoe boxes with notebooks and crap in. I'm digging through no shoe boxes and stuff. And I was like, what are you doing? I said, I got to find that little notebook I had that had my ClickBank username and password in it so I can walk into my clip, click, click, ClickBank. <laughs> <laughs> See, and uh, <coughs> yeah, I would have lost the notebook. <laughs> well, I actually have it, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, I don't know. Actually, I think with notebooks, I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I go through, and it's, you know, I take all kinds of notes in my, in some of my books. Like, some of them are, are sectioned, and they're, they have their, their purpose for specific things, but then I have a couple that have, like, random things in them. And before I throw them out, I try to go through and make sure I'm not throwing away passwords or anything. Yeah. I got three notebooks laying right in front of me. One of them is nothing but attraction marketing. One is, uh, I don't know how, how many months of notes. And the, the one in front of me right here has two pages left in it that I get to start a new one. So. Yeah, I have two right here. Sorry, I have what kids coming in here from playing in the rain <laughs> now and if you're interested in what we talked about summer school in the very beginning and if you're interested in what summer school is you want to know what it is either contact wonder Wit or myself and we'll tell you what it is and i just seen a post by the curator of summer school and she said there is 2100 people in that group right now so in two days it's went from zero to 2100 people hungry marketers looking for ways to market their business so and that's what i've been doing my facebook live on every night you know i've been getting the topic and i've been delivering my version of the topic so you know you guys can devour it and see that on my facebook page so that's amazing two days yeah and that's all word of mouth, isn't it? She just put a post on Facebook. Actually, she sent out. She sent out the email. Emails to her list, you know, and then she made a Facebook post. And I seen the Facebook post. It come up in my news feed. I'm like, oh, shit, I better got an email. So I hurried up and logged into my email. And there it was. I got a personal invite. So I hurried up and, and signed up. And I got approved instantly, you know, since she seen my name. Because I've I'm interacted like with her before, with her. you know. You know, I have a personal relationship with her. I mean, I don't, I don't call her for every problem or anything, but I've been with her on uh, Dave Ramsey's show. And you know, if I have a problem, I can email her, and she'll answer me right away. 
Yeah, see, you have that rapport with her. I got the email, but it was during the holiday, so I just, I, I didn't even look at my emails, actually. I saw that, that Facebook post you're talking about, and I was like, oh, no, what did I miss? And I went through my email. I went through, like, 200 emails. Yeah. I know I had a good 50 of them in my, in my, uh, my jamesjshaw.com, you know, so. And I haven't even checked my new website. I got an email set up for it, but I haven't even checked it yet. So I, I get uh, emails from Elegant Themes because I haven't put it out there with the email addresses because I don't want all kinds of spam and stuff coming to it because it's a business email. Um, didn't see any questions in the chat, so I don't know if uh, you guys in the chat have any questions at all. Now's the time to ask them. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to you. Mike Wimbish, he's on our on the YouTube channel watching live. You know, Mike promotes all our stuff for us, you know, and I appreciate all the sharing that Mike has done and all the support he gives, and I appreciate him and what he's done. And uh, I also want to give Maria a shout out. She's in the chat. She got her first or, or her second sale, ten dollar trial, you know, and she she was thanking me for it, you know, and like I told her. She did all the work. All I did was chip away the rough edges. I just instilled in her that she was a leader. When she didn't believe she was a leader, and I believed in her for her until she believed in herself, and that's all I did for her. She yeah. did all the she did all the work. So, but congratulations, Maria. Congrats, Maria. Mike, thanks so much for showing up and supporting us. So appreciated. Definitely appreciate it, boy. Yeah. Um. Uh, we're probably going to end a few minutes. we got three minutes, so, you know, uh, we can chit-chat a little bit. Or, But I want to give a shout-out. You know, we, our Workshop Warrior Institute has changed time to 10 a.m. on Saturday. So, you know, if any of you are interested in that and want to know more about what the Workshop Warrior Institute is, uh, give uh, Wonder Wit a shout-out on Facebook and ask her what it is, or, get, or myself, you know. Give us a shout out, post on our wall, send us a you know a private message, whatever, you know. Just get a hold of us. Um, and we'll talk about the workshop here in a little bit, you know. Um, what the workshop is, you know, you get a you're on a Zoom hangout, live, face to face, like me and Wonder Wit are now. If you have a question, you know, you're brand new, you don't know what to do. Wonder Wit, how do I talk to people? She's gonna deliver how you talk to people. She's gonna tell you some points that you can take notes on and tell you exactly what to do. Jamie, how do I set up my blog? I'm going to go through and show you how to set up your blog step by step. If I don't have time to run through it right there, on, I'll send you a private uh, message and we'll go set up a time and I'll get on a Zoom with you. And you can ask Wonder Wit because I've done it with her many times. I'll get on a Zoom with you and I'll show you step by step on how to set up your, your workshop. And he speaks English. He doesn't speak techie at me, which I so much appreciate. <laughs> He comes down to my level of tech skill, which is like zero. <laughs> yeah, so I'll let you have the floor. You talk about the workshop a little bit, you know. <clears throat> uh, you know, the workshop has been really, really great for me. I just feel like, you know, when Dave asked me to be a part of it, I was a bit nervous. I, I didn't really, you know, I didn't, at that point, I didn't really feel like I had a lot to contribute, which made me nervous about being in there. And, Honestly, if I hadn't had the push to deliver and to teach, especially being an introvert, I wouldn't have stepped up to the plate, especially as quickly as I did. Um, it definitely made a huge difference in the way that I approached my presence, especially online. You know, as far as being a part, being a part of the community and being expected to teach like that. I know it's intimidating for a lot of people, and you know, it's, we don't say there <coughs> a whole hour or anything like that. You know, ten minutes, five minutes, whatever, you, whatever you can. But get in the habit of starting to, you know, develop enough that week to be able to share something, even if it's something you think we know. Um, but it it lets you. It it's I don't want to say it's it's an environment where people are supporting you that you can come to with these things and we can help you tweak the areas that need to be tweaked. You know, you're not just thrown to the wolves <laughs> or anything like that. That's what makes it so amazing is yeah, you know, you can come in and, and teach and then we're gonna we're gonna all give our little little tweak if you need it. 
a lot of times, you know, the leaders that we have in there now, I, I feel like we've created some really great leaders. I feel like there's not always um, tweaking. You know, the tweaking that we do now is mostly with the, the newbies, and that's great. That's what it's there for. But um, that workshop has been invaluable. It's a great tool to have. You know, it ends up being a lot of a mastermind. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it's turned into. It's, it's still a learning environment, but it is a mastermind also. And that's why we changed the name of the Workshop Warrior Institute. And uh, I mean, it, it helped me tremendously. Over a year ago, I was afraid to do videos. And why the hell I was afraid, I have no idea. Because I'm good on video. You know, and like Wonder Witt talked about in her five points, you know. Uh, no, number three, know your unique selling points. My unique selling points are the techie stuff. I'm good at the techie stuff. I'm good at the blog. I'm good at fixing computers. You know, I'm good at figure out, figuring out problems. And that's what I focus on. And I need to focus more on that. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's not all about, like, like I said, you know, the unique selling points. Of course, you're going to have a, a good amount of things that you're good at. But know those unique things. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean you're not good at other things. It's just you want to play your strengths. You want to play the memorable cards, the things that not everybody has. Right. You know, and those are my 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 strengths, so that's what I focus on. You know, so uh, let's top the hour. I'm going to cover the workshops going on through the week, and then we will close out. And uh, let's see, Monday night is the workshop. It is the workshop, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Monday night is a 24 hour marketing mastermind with Dave Rand, Kate, Katie Stage, Pop Stage, and myself on the panel. Tuesday is Maria and Sonia, and marketing systems will work. But I think lately they've been doing Facebook Lives on their Facebook pages together with Be Live. So I haven't got to catch one yet, but I need to catch them, you know, next Tuesday and see what they're talking about because I haven't been on one for a couple weeks. So and then Wednesday is Pat Patterson's Wisdom Wednesday. And then back here next Thursday night for uh, Jamie Shaw Marketing Show. You guys, you got any hangouts or events you want to, you know? I'm sorry, I missed it. What? I said you got any events or hangouts that you want to? Um, no, um, I actually, you know, I started this uh, a different um, training tool. And so I've been kind of posting my updates on Facebook. It's been easier for my list to kind of keep up with me there while Mindset Warriors is on sabbatical um, during the summer. I don't know how long our sabbatical is going to keep going, though. So we may be back and be Mindset Warriors Reloaded, which I'm very, very excited for because I miss doing it. I miss my partner in crime. She's actually in Florida this week, and I'm like, take me with you. <laughs> but um, we will be back soon. But for now... We've been definitely keeping up with Facebook, and that's where I've been posting all my updates. All right. Cool. Any last words before we shut off? No, just be you and own that room. Own the room, take your inventory, and do the thing. Show up. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, Underwit, and we will see you all next Thursday night on the Jamie Show Marketing Show.